If you are not deploying your Next.js app to Vercel, most likely you are deploying it to self-hosted distributed environment. An enterprise-grade um, application should be able to scale up and or down depending on the request load. When using Kubernetes or AWS ECS or other solutions, you end up with uh, multiple instances running at the same time. In such case, uh, default Next.js cache won't work because each instance will have its own cache. And then you will end up with a data divergence because load balancer will be sending requests uh, each time to a different instance. Another issue will be uh, when you need to revalidate the cache, right? Since now each instance has its own cache, you have to revalidate the cache uh, across all these instances. One of the solutions is to have a shared cache, such as Redis. Let's uh, take a look how to integrate Redis with a Next.js application. First, let's go to Next.js examples, right? Here on a GitHub, right, we have a Vercel count and there's some repository with a Next.js examples. And what we care about is actually cache handler Redis. Right, we're going to look at the cache handler Redis integration example, and we see it uses cache handler package. I'm not sure how to pronounce this one. This Shawness. Sorry if you guys know it, put it in the comments. So, but we are interested in this package, right? So after you know going to through npm, you can find the documentation for this package right here, and it's a pretty good package. So you can look at the introduction. Let's jump into the first steps. And right here, it just uh, explains how to quickly install uh, this handler. And we can just do it through the NPM install. And also it tells you if you're gonna be using Redis handler, right? You're gonna install Redis. If we scroll a little bit more, we can find the integration with the Next.js. And at the very bottom, you're gonna see Redis integration example. Let's click on it and we have the cache handler.mjs file that you need to put in the root of your project, basically next to your next.config.js. And we're going to rename config.mjs into config.js file. So right here, you can see that it uses a cache handler and then specifically cache handler Redis stack. There's also cache handler local LRU. So, and here on the left-hand side, you can see those handlers, right? If you click on a Redis stack, it's going to tell you that it uses Redis with a JSON uh, and with a Redis search. And it's a, you know, pretty advanced Redis where you can do a full text search, right? It's a little slower than just a regular Redis string. However, it has benefits. Right here down, you have Redis strings. This one uses a plain Redis and it's super fast. And finally, you have a local LRU. This is the instance of the cache store that uses memory. So now if we go back to the Redis example, we can see that first the code attempts to create the Redis cache handler. But if it fails for some reason, it uses this LRU cache handler. So to use the memory, it may be something that you want or may be something that you don't want because when deploying in production, obviously, you kind of don't want to have the fallback into your memory because as explained earlier, each pod or container uh, having its own cache memory is not a good idea. However, when building your application, your build server may not actually have access to Redis and that's where you can use the LRU fallback. So your application won't be caching any requests at a build time, but then at the runtime, it will actually use uh, the Redis uh, cache handler, right? And here also you have a link building an app without Redis cache connection. And it basically uh, tells you how to configure your Redis or cache handler that MGS file if, uh, you know, Redis instance is not available at the build time, for example. So going back to handler example or Redis cache handler example, we can also see that we're importing create client from Redis. So we'll need to install Redis. And if we go to the NPM of Redis right here, Redis package, nor it's actually a node Redis, 
we can see that it suggests to install the Docker and it looks like it's installing the Redis that we need, Redis stack server. And we're gonna insta install uh, latest. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna actually run our Redis locally in a Docker. Let's actually go ahead and jump into the terminal and we're gonna go ahead and uh, pull that container and run it. We'll have a little bit different command. Basically, we're gonna run it as a detached, right? And we're gonna run the same stack and we're going to bind it to the port 3379. And my image is already pulled, so yours will actually have to pull it. And then it basically ran this uh, container. If you have Docker desktop, you can see it running in the Docker desktop. But what we're going to do, we're going to also install a Redis commander. Again, I have it installed, but if you run this command, right, it's going to install globally a Redis commander. After Redis Commander is installed, we can just type Redis Commander. And as you can see, the Redis Commander is running on the local host 8081. And it uses the 0, DB0 Redis actually has 16 databases out of the box. So it goes from 0 to 15 and Redis Commander is using database 0. So let's go ahead and uh, check it out. We are going to switch to the browser and we're going to type localhost 8081. And you can see that the Redis commander is here, so it was able to connect it to the our instance that is running in Docker. So, and obviously there is nothing in here, so if we refresh, there is nothing here. Okay, so our uh, Redis cache is running, so we're good to go. Let's switch back to the terminal and here we're going to stop the Redis commander. And we're going to run npx create next app at latest. We're going to call it next JS Redis stack. And we'll just go for all the defaults here. The installation is complete. Let's actually CD into next JS Redis stack. And let's go ahead and run npm install. Uh, with a development flag and we're going to install the cache handler and Redis dependencies. Okay, dependencies are installed. Let's just go ahead and type code and dot so we can open um, our Next.js application in VS Code. Let's go to the VS Code. So right here, we're going to create a new file and call it .env. And in this file, we're going to put the following. So we're going to put Redis URL, and here I'm specifying the Redis database. I'm just going to explicitly put it to zero. Also, there is a Redis prefix. I'm just going to put it next app. Let's go ahead and save it. And now let's open that git ignore. And we will need to add that env file into the git ignore because Next.js doesn't add it by default. So let's go ahead and save that. The next file that I'm going to create in the root of the project. It's going to be called nexthandler.mjs. And I'm going to put the following code in there. Let's take a look at the code. Basically, I just copied and pasted the code from the Redis handler example, but I made a couple of changes. So instead of hard coding my Redis URL, I put it in the env variable and here I have it right here. Everything else is pretty much the same, except for I used that prefix right over here. I also put it in the env variable. And I also decided not to remove the LRU handler, and I left it as a fallback. Now let's go ahead and update next config.mjs. So we're going to put the following code. We are going to use here require resolve. And since ESM doesn't really have a good way to do require resolve. So we're going to change our next config.mjs file into next config.js. All right, so let's go and do just that. And we should be good to go. Let's open the terminal and run npm run build. And it looks like we got a little bit of an error here. It says uh, module not found cache handler.mjs and that's because we named it next handler instead of cache handler. Let's go ahead and rename it.
And let's go ahead and run again, npm run build. Well, that's a double whammy one. Looks like I made another mistake. I missed the D in there, so let's go ahead and rename it again. We're gonna put it cache handler. Let's go ahead and run again. So hopefully the third time is a charm. All right, the build is done. Let's take a look. Basically, they're all static pages right here. Got generated, not many. Obviously the index page and not found page. Let's jump into the terminal and run Redis Commander. Okay, and in the browser, right, let's go ahead and refresh. And uh, nothing is in here, right? Nothing is in cache. All right. I just switch back to the VS Code and run npm run start. The app is ready. Let's go to localhost 3000. In the browser, we open localhost. 3000 and we have our next application now let's go ahead and switch to redis commander again and see if we got any cache now all right so now you can see that we actually have the next app index page cached right we can take a look at it and you can see the html code so now if we're going to refresh it this actually content of this page will be served from the cache now we have Redis cache working with the Next.js. As you can see, integrating Redis with Nesca cache library was quite easy. If you are using uh, Redis in your production, you may also want to use Redis in your local development environment. First, uh, your local development environment will be much closer to your production environment. And second, uh, you will have a better insight in what is actually cached by your next application using such tools as Redis Commander. I also encourage you to read uh, Neshka Cache Handler Library's documentation. Uh, it has actually a Nesh Cache function that allows you to cache results of expensive operations uh, such as database queries. And if you would like to learn how to integrate a database with your Next.js application using ORM such as Prisma, please check out this video.